Hello, I'm Bradley, and welcome to my channel. So, you may be wondering why I would have included, or why I chose to include this on my channel. Well, my channel, for a very long time, has always been something which I have turned to, but not just to express and to share my interests, or... It's, it's so much more than that. It's, it's a tool to be able to kind of to help me on my way throughout this journey of life. Never in a million years would I ever have expected that I would have lost my nan, especially the way I lost my nan. Um, I can quite honestly say that I am still completely shocked and we are, we are the 8th of July and we lost my nan on the 31st of May, and every day it's almost like that I'm waking up to that shock. And I am absolutely lost. I am absolutely lost without my nan. I really, really am. I'm lost without nan. Every... throughout my whole life, I have never ever spent time away from her. The coronavirus pandemic caused issues where I couldn't put my arms around my nan and give her a hug because of where she, because of her illness. And um, my nan had Alzheimer's um, and where she lived was almost like, um, it was almost like a, re like a retirement complex or like a, I hate to use that term care home because I don't believe that credits these type of places enough. I think I mean, where my nan was, it was an absolutely wonderful place. She had a very lovely, big, spacious room, almost like an apartment-sized room, and it was beautiful. And, and I would change it for all around every different season. So in the summer, we'd have something different. The walls had all sorts of all different um, pictures and, and, and photographs of family and all sorts of messages and signs and things for nan. And, and um, it was just like her home, exactly how her home would be. But my nan handled her illness absolutely rem remarkably such an inspiration to us all in my in, in our lives she really the determination and her willpower was really just just very often would leave me speechless how I would see my nan keep coming back from something, nothing would ever get her down. And yes, as that cloud of my nan's illness grew over her in the last, um, I would say my nan passed away several days before she turned 95. So in my heart, my nan is 95. She's at peace in her 95th year. Um, I cannot say that my nan, the D word, I cannot say that my nan She's passed away, I always say, um, and as I said to my nan when I visited her in the chapel of rest and I was with her when she passed away, this isn't the end, we just won't be able to hold hands anymore. But I am lost, never in my life have I spent time away from her. As I was saying, even throughout the coronavirus pandemic, I there was a, there was a period where I wasn't even allowed on the premises, but I was still seeing my nan through a glass screen or in a pod visit, so there wasn't any real great length of time between my nan and, and me seeing each other, and my mum is just as close. Of course, she's her daughter, so even closer to her. And my mum, my nan, and me have such an amazing, strong bond, and I do with my brothers as well. And we've seen my nan, but my nan, I don't think about my whole life, and I'm 28 now, I've ever really spent, I think the longest I've been is like almost like a two week holiday, um, when obviously my nan didn't come with me. Um, from an early age, I remember getting so excited seeing my nan or my nan coming over to our house or going up for the day of my nan or going to my nan's house. Um, I spent so much time with her growing up. I, I stayed at my nan's at weekends as a, a young boy into a teenager in my later teenage years. Um, and then turning into the man I am before you today, I spoke to my nan about what I wanted to do with my career, um, when I started having hearing problems, different health problems, my nan has been there to almost like hold my hand throughout it all. Um, I have amazing, amazing parents, but I've been gifted with an absolutely an incredible life where I have got my amazing mum and then my nan was like a second mum to me as well. And it's just, I genuinely feel I'll be quite honest, I do feel like life is over. I know that's not the case. 
and forgive me for saying that, but it physically hurts here. I don't sleep at night. I keep looking at a picture of my nan. I've got one. I'm sat at my desk at the moment. I've got one at my desk here of me and my nan. One behind me there of um, nan, myself, and my twin brother. And I've got pictures everywhere. Um, when we, I had the the privilege and the honour of organising my nan's funeral and her last wishes alongside my mum. That was really, really hard. Really, really hard. Um, I put a brave face on throughout all of it to support others, and inside I was, like I am, I'm kind of crumbling, I have to admit. But to have to think about moving forward, I know, I know, like I said to my nan in the Chapel of Rest, when I see my nan, and, um, and at first, even, even that, I was very nervous, I've never ever seen anybody who, who had passed away at all before, um, and my mum bought my nan this beautiful suit, this dusty pink outfit um, for my nan and her high shoes and everything, how my nan would like to, to have been dressed. And um, the funeral home are absolutely fantastic. And my mum done her makeup and, and even as a child, I always would kind of like brush my nan, my nan would be sat down in her sort of in her lounge. And um, my nan would kind of like do this trick, like we would brush her hair and we were very, very small. and um, She'd say, do you want to brush Nanny's hair? And all of a sudden, we would be doing that. And all of a sudden, I would go, <laughs> and, and frighten us to death. And we'd laugh, and it would be that kind of joke. So as we got kind of older, I've always done that. And then as my Nan got, um, sort of like helped Nan out, do you know what I mean? Not obviously when my Nan was fine. She was an absolute glamorous, glamorous, proud lady. Goodness me, you'd never be able to touch my Nan's hair or anything. But when she started to have this cloud of her illness, the Alzheimer's was growing over her, and she needed a bit of help to keep her appearance and things how she would want to be, which my mum and, and myself done. Um, we visited her, we were there all the time, all the time. So I would still, I would still do that, I would help my mum styling my nan's hair, and um, my mum colouring my nan's hair, I would help her with that. Because nan always said to my mum, she never ever wanted to dye a grey-haired old lady. And she never did, bless her, she never did. Um, and at 95, um, my nan turned, uh, turned 90, she was three days just before, um, I think it was just three days just before, um, and uh, no, it was a little bit more than that. My nan's birthday is the 5th of June, but you get what I mean. It was a very short time before my nan turned 95, so in my heart, she's 95. And um, even seeing my nan when she was in the chapel of rest, from, I was with her when she took her last breath with my mum and my oldest brother, and, um, and then I see my nan in the chapel of rest, and and I, and I said this in the previous clip when I announced that my nan had passed away, but my nan was 95, but she did not look no more than mid-60s. She looked absolutely incredible as a film. My nan was always like a film star. When she walked into a room, she was an absolute a beautiful, beautiful lady, very, very glamorous lady. Um, much as my mum and, and my friends and family, I hope I look as good, but um, I certainly don't feel it at the moment at all. And... Um, Yes, yeah, seeing my nan in the chapel of rest was, as I say, I was worried. But then I thought to myself, why am I, why am I worried? It's my nan. Those hands are the same hands what held my hand as I crossed the road, or when she took me to school, when she collected me, or when she held my hand, getting me through a tough situation. So I did, and um, yeah, it was difficult, and and getting through the funeral was very, very difficult. And now. Even the reverend of the service was fantastic, and I gave my, I had the utmost privilege to give my nan's eulogy at the funeral, and I was sort of, I was sort of the, I was the usher at the funeral as well, and um, sort of like greeting everybody as they left, so I had quite a, a privileged, very large role at my nan's funeral, I was very, very close to my nan. Um, but now, I have all my family around me, and I have my amazing parents, and my amazing mum by my side all the time. But do you know what? Just without my nan, I feel so alone. I feel so alone. Throughout my whole life, I've never spent time away from her. Um, I used to call all the time to the people who would look after um, my nan. I would speak to the care staff, and I would speak to my, care, my nan's care manager. And I would speak to my nan over the phone, and as my nan's illness progressed with that cloud over her, 
if her communication was really quite difficult, or if she couldn't sometimes, I would still talk to her through the phone. And um, my nan was, is the most beautiful, caring, wonderful lady ever. And um, what gets me through is that she's with the Lord and she's with Jesus up above now, and she's with my grandfather and she's with her daughter and her son, my aunt and my uncle. And she's with her sisters and her brothers and my nan never got to meet her mum. So she, well, she did, but she was four when she lost her mum. Um, so I pray to the Lord every night, um, since my, I, I do it anyway, but more so since my nan has passed away. But, um, and it's like now, like, what do I do in life? I feel so out of place. I feel like my career is sort of paused. I feel like my life is on hold. And you know, I get all of this it must be normal. I've never, I've experienced grief before when I lost my aunt and my uncle, and I love them dearly. And I only wish they were here today. Um, but my nan, being she's like that second mum to me, lost is a short statement, let's put it this way, of how I'm feeling. Um, you, if you have been a subscriber to my channel for a while, you'll know that I come to my channel and it's a tour for me along the bumpy road of life. Now underneath on the front of my page, I always put um, with great looking hair. Well, I haven't bothered with my hair really since. Um, since my nan passed away at all, um, what I actually do now is I just take a band and when it's wet or I put some tonic through my hair or whatever I'm using and I just you know, do it up into like a man's top knot at the back and I leave it. Um, I really haven't got the interest there at the moment at all. Um, but I may look at that, I may look at that again in the future, I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. Um, so why I keep looking off to the side, by the way, is because I've got a picture of me and my nan here, and I showed it on the, I showed it on the uh, when I announced that my nan had passed away. But this is the picture. I absolutely love this picture. This is this is I never when my nan was alive, I never showed her on my channel just for privacy and dignity. I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't want my nan. Do you know what I mean? Um, I hope you understand that. But she means the world to me. And this is my nan here. Her name is Gwendolyn, and. Um, yeah. What a lady. What a lady. Um, every second of the day, I wish she was still here with me. And it makes it hard because on the different people and things I follow on YouTube, they do different things with their um, channels with their grandmother. And um, admittedly, my nan was one of the oldest. Um, I mean, you would never think, you'd never ever think that, not in a million years. Um, and it makes me sound like an awful person, doesn't it? But but um, they have all still got their grandmother, and I just hope that they cherish their grandmother for as long as they have her and um, have them. All grandparents cherish them for as long as you have them. Um, I just think to myself, and I haven't got mine now, and uh, it's really, really tough really tough on a daily basis. I feel so lost. I feel like, I do feel like life has ended. I really, really do. And I know I shouldn't say that, but I do. I feel like that when I look to do something or if I plan to do something and then I just think, no, I can't. I can't. Um, sometimes it's, just, it's almost like I can't breathe. But now that could be like panic. Um, and of course, I'm still recovering from my recent operation, which I had quite an extent, had quite a major extensive surgery on my groin. I am just so pleased that I managed to be there with my nan when she took her, 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 when she had that turn of ill health on the Sunday on the 30th. And then um, my nan took her last breaths on, her, took her last breath on, um, a Monday, the 31st of May. I'm just glad I got to be there. And throughout most of the night, me and my mum would swap and I, we'd be holding our hands or rubbing her hair, rubbing you know I mean, through the face and then stroking her hair and talking to her. And um, I'm glad that got to happen. I'm glad I got to be there. One of my biggest worries in life is that my mum would be on her own, but never anything happened to her. Because I think when you have 
your nan or, or your or your grandfather or, or any grandparents, um, and they are in their nineties. Nineties, they're strange years, aren't they? Because every time I left my nan, I would always pray and hope that I'd get the opportunity to see her again. So my mum always, whenever she left my nan, she would always kiss and hug her and love her like it would be her last time. Now, that sounds very strange, doesn't it? But hopefully I'll get there and you'll know. And it's like I did too. And it's like every time we would do that. We always want more, don't we? We always want more. Like I, I, I say to myself, I would have held my hand for a lifetime if the Lord would have allowed me. But that wasn't meant to be. Lost. Lost without Nan. I don't think it will ever be the same. I really don't. When I looked at my Nan and she, because my Nan actually had, um, she had a heart attack. There were several, several things happened on the Sunday. She was having a very good day. And um, my Nan actually had a heart attack. And um, what it done to her was wicked and absolutely horrific, as well as my nan battling Alzheimer's as well. And she was not a frail lady. Um, when I seen her and I got there, when the ambulance called us, um, and my mum took the call and we and we rushed there straight away. Very in mind, I just had major surgery, but I was not going to not be there at all. So I didn't even have to think. We went and we were there. And when I walked in the room and I seen my nan, what it done to her was, I'll be heartbroken for life, let's put it that way, I really, really will be. Um, and it was at that moment when I looked at Nan that I could actually see that how ill my Nan over the last couple of months actually was. Even though she handled it really, really well, and like, for example, my would have her head on every Tuesday, and she wouldn't really show it. I think, when I think back on things, my was getting ever so slightly more tired each time, and things were just, general life was becoming more of a struggle. But because of how strong my was and how determined she was, I knew that there was always more to give, that she always had more. And I would see that strength. And when I walked in the room and I seen her on that Sunday, I seen that that had, that had changed, but my nan's determination was still there and she was still battling this. Um, I don't know, I don't know. When we, when, because I actually left my nan for about an hour come home and get some medication because I was in a lot of pain. My mum, bless her, ordered me to. So my eldest brother took me and then when we got back, we rushed back to see my nan. Um, and I was so frightened that she was going to go before. My mum was with her um, and held her throughout. We both did. We we, we all did. And um, when we got there, I could almost see that my nan's fight had sort of, almost sort of, In the early hours of that morning, when I was there, my nan throughout the whole time had her eyes closed, but she opened her eyes and she looked at my mum. And a very, very surreal moment happened. And I won't go into it because that's, that is something between my nan and my mum, but it was almost like my nan sort of asked my mum if it was okay. And then shortly after, um, no, I won't, I won't go into that. And, sh and shortly after, my nan closed her eyes and she continued to struggle. But I could see that, um, especially when I came back to her in the morning, after, I mean, I was with her all throughout the night, myself, my oldest brother and my mum were, but I think it was about seven o'clock in the morning on the Monday, I left for about an hour um, to come home um, and to get some pain relief and to change and things like that. It's about, about a half an hour journey from where I lived to where my nan was. And um, 
when we got back there, I could see that Mam was just different. It was almost like that she was ready. It was almost like that she was ready. And then at around 20 past 12, she took her last breath. And we were with her. We, we kissed her. We hugged her. We loved her. We held her hand. We talked to her. And in those last moments, I was sat with my nan. And I could feel she was getting weaker. And I was trying to measure my nan's breathing on how I was breathing. Sort of like when you would need to breathe again. And um, I said to my mum, I can't, we'd only just changed over, but I said, well, I can't, you need to, you need to hold Nan's hand, you need to be the one. And then I sat just then beside my mum in front of my Nan while she was led on, obviously, in her bed. And um, and we were, we were with her, and, and my twin brother was there at this point as well, he came back with us from when... We came, we came back and um, with my oldest brother there and it will never ever leave me, it will never ever leave me, never. And it, it's still, you know, it, it feels so surreal, it's like even now, do you know what, I'm saying this but it actually feels like when I'm still here, that she's, she's at home and she's there and I'm going to be seeing her and I feel awful, I feel really really awful that it's almost like that I haven't I haven't called for a little while and I need to call her, I need to make sure she's okay, I need to see her. And it's just like I can't. It's really strange. It's really, really strange. You know, I'm being honest, sometimes I find that my head is almost that something's almost happening to me. It makes me feel like that. It does make me feel like that. I really will be honest. Um it that's that's the way I would I'd probably explain it at the moment. Um, I feel like life's over. I feel like I haven't got one to move forward with. Life scares me about her in it. Like I said to my man, give me time and I will show you all I can be. I pray all the time. And my mum is incredible. My mum is absolutely incredible. Um, and of course she's going through this as well. I try to be tough for my mum, and I know she does for me as well. But, um, and of course, all my other family as well. I have an aunt, I have uncles, all in that same situation. I really don't know. I really don't know, but lost without none. That's how I feel. Lost. I really do. I almost feel like I could kind of take a complete break from life at the moment. I really could. It feels strange that for, I was always sort of everything was now every day was now was now me making sure she was okay. If we went out, we'd buy something for her, or I would buy something. I think, oh, now I'd like to try that, and I would get that, and my mum would do the same, clothes and things, or or sort of personal sort of beauty products or stuff and things like that, and. If I seen something, it made me think now I would get it, and it's like I would I would call my own sort of care team or care manager and speak to them in the week, and then I'd have visits at the weekend, and or if I had somebody to take me down, I'd see my own in the week, and 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 now and now, like I said on my previous on my sort of announcement when I said that my nan had passed away in my previous clip. And now I talk to my nan through the Lord above. Do you know, I let you into a secret. I often, I'm, I, it's cheeky of me, I know, and I ask you my prayers. I always ask, can you please just let my nan come to me, even in my dreams? Please just let her come to me. Let her, please just let her, know, let me know that she's okay, that she's now my grandfather, and that everything is okay, and all her ailments and her illness has disappeared now. Um, he hasn't hoped it happened, he's hoping it does, but, and I have to believe that, because if I don't, I don't know how I would, how I would function, I don't know how I would get through this, I really don't. Do I think that things are spiralling into a bit of a, 
honestly, some days I think I'm having a bit of a breakdown, I really do. Or, I don't know, my thoughts have always been so, I'm almost a, such a controlled, sort of uniformed, organised person. Now it's almost like that my, my thoughts sort of, I struggle to keep it together, let's put it that way. I come to my channel to talk about things, to get things off my chest and talk about all sorts of things. Never in a million years. It sounds strange, doesn't it? My name was 90, would have turned 95, so I, in my heart she's 95, several days before 95, but at 95 I know, I know I wouldn't have had my name forever, but I, you know, I never ever contemplated losing her. Never. Not in a million years, never. I find it difficult now because when I go through life, I always have my name there. So, new promotions, new jobs, something good happens, something bad happens, Nan's with me. Or I'd go and see Nan, I'd tell Nan about it, and it would be fine. Moving forward. Moving forward in life. Different positions. Different milestones in life. Not so much in this life, and I kind of always thought that my name would be there beside me. Do you know what I mean? I, I want to get married, I want to have the beautiful wife, I want to have the beautiful children, and I want to have a big family and a big house, and I wanted my name to see all of that. I wanted the big flash career, the flash role, and everything like that. I'm not vain, I'm not chauvinistic or anything like that, or materialistic. I just wanted her to be a part of everything, and I know she always will be, but in person I wanted her here. And I know at my nan's age, perhaps that was unrealistic, but I find it really difficult. My nan never even got to see me with sort of like a settled down. I, I don't I don't have that life partner at the moment, I don't have that girlfriend, I don't have sort of children or anything like that. My other brothers do. I don't have my first sort of house or anything like that. So there's an element of jealousy there as well. There's, see all these thoughts, all these thoughts. It helps to talk about them. It helps to talk about them. I will always talk and treasure and cherish my memories of my nan. I will always cherish my nan. I always will. I cannot talk about her in the past tense at the moment at all. For me, she's here. She's here always. She's with me always. My nan always said when I was younger, Always, always, always said to me when I was younger that I think the world of you, my love, and although I might not see you grow up, I will always be with you and I will always be looking down on you. And if I talk about my life or what I want my life to be, that's how she would say, you'll be the one out of this family to go far, my love, and I will make sure of it. And I know she will. Like, when I even spoke, when I, my mum is incredible, to, and when I think of it sometimes it's cruel because my mum is so well to console me and is absolutely amazing and incredible. We have a very, very special bond. My mum is my best friend. Nan was my best friend. Um, and it's just like, I know she's going through the same thing, but it's almost like, I don't know, perhaps I'm not handling it. I don't, I don't know. I'm not. I know I'm not. But, um... It's almost like when I spoke to the funeral home, um, who actually looked after my grandfather when he passed away 26 years ago. Um, my nan done all those arrangements, um, believe it. And um, they looked after my nan when she passed away and for, conducted her funeral and the service and everything. And um, I even spoke to them this week because they're fantastic. And um, they called just to even see how I was. And because I arranged everything with my mum. And um, she spoke to me firm, but very consoling and very lovely and very beautiful and said to me, you cannot let your nan down. You have to push on with life. You cannot let yourself go into a depression. And I thought, Do you know what? And I thought about that and thought about that and thought about that. And I thought to myself, I won't. I won't. And I look at my nan's picture and I keep thinking to myself, give me time. I'll never let you down and I'll show you all I can be. In time. In time. In time. 
Thanks very much for sharing this with me. This is not just going to go away. I, whether or not I will, whether or not I will keep coming to my channel with my nan, I'm not sure. She will always be there and throughout my clips and things, she will always be a part of it. Um, different products and things I review, I always make, because if I bought a product, I'd always buy it for my nan as well. And I love that because I love, I get so many amazing comments and things on my channel about products for hair and things. And, um, and that was almost like that me and nan had that sort of bond, that sort of connection with doing that. We always had an amazing bond, but sort of different trying products and things out for our hair and all that. I would always buy that for my nan and I would try it as well. And, and, um, and, and yeah, and yeah, she will always be a part of everything. And, um, I will talk about her all the time and I do talk about her all the time and I reminisce with memories about her all the time. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure. I've always kept my name very, very private. Um, and rightfully so. And rightfully so, because I believe that my name was not from an era of sort of all different sort of social media and online and, and all these sort of things and that. So I wouldn't sort of plaster pictures and pictures of my name everywhere because I wouldn't do that. I've used the one on this clip today because I think that that just pays great respect to my name and homage about the incredible, beautiful lady she was. And... Um, and yeah. Okay. So thank you very much for everything. Thank you for just being there and listening. I come to my channel for not just support, but to get things off my chest, to talk, to breathe, and and just vent, I think. And of course it helps. I have an amazing family to talk to, and amazing parents to talk to. Um, but sometimes, especially with something like this, I don't want to upset my mum with this all the time. So this, I think it helps. I really think it helps. Thank you just for listening and being there. You don't even have to reply. Just thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. And until next time, I will be back with a clip. Um, perhaps I may even have a look. I have been trying some hair systems and things because my hair has not been great. Well, I've not really been sort of, I've been looking after it, but I've not really been paying too much attention to it. Um, so I, I, I'm, I was out um, a week or so ago and I picked up a different product just to see what I if I could try it and perhaps just to, to get an interest going again so um perhaps we'll even have a look at that shortly on my channel as well but um as I say thank you once again for everything it certainly means the world to me in the comments throughout my recovery of my surgery which we I will be coming back to my channel to do um the update on how that went because there was a lot of problems with it but we're certainly getting there now so that will be coming up shortly as well so thank you very much for everything and until next time I'll be back. I'll be back. Um, I'll never ever be the same. I'll never ever be the same. But I'll still be Bradley. I'll still be Bradley. But um. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Bye for now.